this 12 years of my work, uh, and just two weeks ago we uh, uh, published the report, uh, which is available, and we print it out, and we have printed out uh, both in Polish and English uh, version of this report for you to check. The electronic version, of course, you can download yourself. Now we know. Now we know what has happened, but hearing the story from uh, Korean Downing and MH17 is like repeating history again and again. Third times we have terrorist attack of Russia on the air airliners with innocent people in, in it. That's amazing that the civilized countries cannot do anything about it. I really hope it will be changed now, uh, and I admire uh, Dutch people to fight in the, in the courts, and we will stand with you. Um, key technical findings of the report. While approaching the Smolensk aerodrome, the captain issued a command to go around, reduce flap angle, and initiated the departure procedure. At that time, an explosion occurred in the left wing about 100 meters before the birch tree, which, according to the Russian report, destroyed this wing. I put a, a, a small model so you can understand. This is the model of Tupolev 154 m and this is the part of the wing that was separated due to explosion 100 meters before this tree. This is about 9% of the lift force. And uh, there are many uh, uh, situations in the past where uh, due to uh, some uh, engine explosion, for example, such portion of the wing was lost, an airplane landed safely without any problem. In this case, of course, it was charged inside of the wing that exploded. So it, did, it was not a very nice, smooth cut. But in addition to the, uh, removing this one third, six meters of the wing tip, uh, the slots, which is in the beginning of, of the wing and, and flaps, were also uh, damaged. Therefore, uh, at the moment of this uh, um, explosion, the G-force reg uh, was registered to drop from 1.1 due to the fact that the airplane was uh, departing to 0 0.6, which means it lost the lift force. The autopilot immediately reacted to this by pushing the uh, uh, airplane to the gliding position and pushing the uh, left wing forward, shadowing the uh, good right wing, and therefore balancing the uh, uh, lift force on both sides and uh, securely fly uh, together, then taken by regular <coughs> rear pi pilots. However, due to the uh, progressive damage of the left wing, the airplane starts to turn down with the left wing down. Um, we are talking about 40 meters almost uh, span of the wings. So the story uh, given by Russian that the, the airplane was cut by the birch tree at the six meters above the ground uh, cannot hold any water because if you start to rotate uh, uh, six meters above the ground, you have to touch with 20 meters still hanging wing. But it is not anything wrong for Mr. Putin. So after that, four seconds later, the next part of the airplane was separated from the airplane. This was the T section of the vertical stabilizer with horizontal stabilizer. That uh, part, which was soon after some staff 38, and uh, caused basically the airplane not to be controlled anymore. And uh, in the position of minus 90 degrees, it dropped like free flight. Uh, this part, on the other hand, flew separately. It is also like a small airplane. So from the moment of separation of this part, there were two objects flying. Uh, and they were noticed by witnesses. This one flew more to the south, the whole airplane more to the north. Eventually, when this part dropped, touched the ground, 
at the minus 90 or plus minus 10 degrees, the full explosion happened in the fuselage. This explosion uh, uh, separated the tail section with three jet engines, which is the heaviest part of the airplane. And typically, when you fly a very shallow angle at uh, 76 meters per second horizontal velocity, only 12 to 18 meters per second vertical, this part, the engines, would move forward the most because there's a lot of kinetic energy, a lot of mass with the same velocity. The light things will stop first, the heavy things will move forward. This explosion took, uh, pushed back the, the whole tail section with the pressure bulkhead and therefore reduced the uh, kinetic energy and therefore it stopped at the beginning of the uh, fuel of the brain. Other thing at this moment happened was the left, uh, left door was shut into the ground uh, from that position, shut into the ground, uh, one meter deep. They couldn't find that door for several days, and that was fortunate for us because they didn't manipulate this critical evidence. Yeah. Um, other things, of course, would be the whole destruction, the whole uh, uh, penetration, and the uh, fragmentation of the whole airplane. Forensic labs detected hexagon, which is RDX, pentrite, TNT, and post explosion compounds on the airplane structure fragments. The explosions caused the death of everybody on board and the total destruction of the aircraft. I would like to show some pictures, examples of the evidence. Due to the explosion, the material not only can uh, store the traces of the uh, chemicals that are uh, producing the explosion, but also they deform in particular way. We can see on the top left uh, picture so-called post-explosion cur uh, curls on that wing that was uh, separated at the very beginning. We uh, have made also simulations of this uh, particular theories from Russia, and we found that if uh, really the airplane would hit the uh, birch tree of the 40, uh, 44 centimeters diameter, basically the wing will cut the tree cleanly, with some damage to the slots and leading edge, but the, any part of the wing will not be separated. The uh, impact of this vertical stabilizer was very interesting, and this is quite new to many of, of uh, um, people right now. The, in fact, in the MAC report, people took the, the proper uh, evidence uh, in, in taking pictures and they found that on the grass, on the south groove, there is a paint, and that paint is from that end of the horizontal uh, uh, stabilizer. This was the only paint on that part left over uh, after the separation. And uh, this uh, uh, basically hit the ground, like you can see on this picture, and then it's integrated and moved forward. So we know uh, that the south groove was done by separate parts, nothing to do with the airplanes uh, as a full body it, itself. We found the traces of fragments uh, uh, left on the ground. You can see uh, the path of flying of this part. It was quite uh, you know, random. It was rotating and flying like a aerodynamic uh, small airplane, but still falling down and left dropping the fragments of that part on the, on the uh, uh, floor, on the grass. Parallel to that, the second path was done from the, the debris from the left wing, which was also uh, damaged and therefore, due to aerodynamic forces, dropped from time to time a piece of uh, segments of this uh, left wing in a parallel fashion and eventually hit the north groove. The first point of the north groove is the piece of the exposed metal uh, sheeting cutting into the, gra into the soil, as you can see, and of course, shield out very quickly. Uh, based on that, we can uh, identify the uh, orientation of the uh, airplane, which basically hit this way with the 90% uh, uh, 
minus 90 degree, de, uh, degrees orientation in terms of rotation about this each axis and rolls down. If there would be no explosion, this would be kind of that type of uh, downing or destroying through the crashing. But it was before it happened, soon after the, the airplane touched it with the left wing, the ground explosion happened. This is the epicenter of this explosion uh, looking from the satellite picture. Within 1.5 kilometer, the, there was uh, several dozen of witnesses who heard the sound like thunder. They, they couldn't see uh, the airplane at that time, but they could hear the explosion. The, uh, uh, we know that from that location, if, this was, if uh, it was exploded, the parts from the particular location of the fuselage, which, which you can see on the uh, left front part of the ballast tank, the parts uh, was pushed forward and dispersed uh, all over, as you can see in this picture of, from the satellite. Um, of course, at the same time, the roof of the uh, airplane and the whole body of the fuselage was fragmented. We were able to put together basically 90% of each side of the airplane and 66% of reconstruction of the uh, uh, roof of this airplane. We found a number of uh, curls and paddles, post-explosive signature uh, def deformation of the sheet of the skin of the airplane, and four concentrations where the, uh, most of the shock wave was pushing out from this fuselage, which is near the uh, cockpit, near the kitchen, near the center wing, and near the uh, uh, pressure bulkhead at the end. These are the examples of those curls from the uh, roof of this airplane. They are uh, twisted a number of times because the uh, uh, shock wave is uh, breaking the material and with high velocity is pushing out, so there's a big difference between the uh, particular part, point of this metal and the rest of the metal, and therefore is that rolling distance, uh, the rolling function of, of this shock wave. Uh, in fact, we, I can tell you that similar uh, uh, curves are in MH17. We found them uh, just looking at your airplane due to the expo ex explosion outside of the nose of the airplane. So not necessarily they, can, they need to happen, this explosion needs to happen inside, it could happen outside as well. The very interesting uh, uh, example of the uh, uh, internal uh, high pressure uh, we found in particular location, which is in the uh, passenger uh, place of the fuselage. This uh, part didn't fragment it to many pieces. In fact, it only broke the roof along the one stringer and opened the roof before falling uh, in the inverted position down to earth. That, of course, of course, shows that the explosion needs to be in the air because if the uh, fuselage would hit the ground first, you will see the situation in the top right situ picture. The, the uh, roof would be in, indented inside of the uh, passenger space and would not be able to spread nicely outside. But it was spread nicely outside. And uh, you could see on this yellow area, which we uh, highlighted for you to uh, easier recognize the spread of this uh, roof uh, uh, for the left side of the roof, then port side, which is left par uh, part of the fuselage, then fuselage bottom, then starboard, which is right side of the uh, fuselage, and the right side of the roof. The, if you can uh, examine the uh, fracture edges of the roof, you can see there is no any uh, material loss, and uh, the, basically the material open along the rivets, which were connected to the stringer. And uh, this has happened typically uh, due to hoop uh, stress under the high pressure inside of the cylinder. So we could put it back, in fact, and fit together the whole fuselage, and there would be no damage. 
Okay, that's, that was that, that it would happen so beautifully. Well, the officers of the uh, uh, Russia they immediately realized the same way as we do that this is the very uh, strong evidence and visible from satellites. You don't need to go there to see this big item. So on the April 11th, which is one day after, they uh, uh, removed everybody from the field 4 or 5 p.m. and started to cut this uh, roof from that uh, particular uh, part of the fuselage. In fact, those pictures were taken by journalists, Russian journalists, who published them in the newspaper next day, saying, look how our heroes are working so hard to recover most likely victims which are over there. Well, it was not recovery, this was cover up uh, his, his story. They cut a roof into many pieces and uh, did not acknowledge this in the MAC report or any uh, uh, information that is officially uh, published. Instead, we found a document produced by Russian prosecutor office that requested experts uh, to uh, examine this part of the fuselage. Well, the expert issued the, the statement in his document, as you can see, copy with stamps. The upper part of the fuselage has not survived the crash. Well, here it is. Now they have everything. They, they cut the, the uh, roof, and then they have the official expert, and the official expert says there is no roof. So it means the roof was destroyed on the contact with the ground, which completely, uh, which is completely lie. This is not the only lie from the Russian report. For example, this is a, a picture of the spar of the uh, of the left wing, which is supposed to be uh, 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 going cutting through the birch tree. So obviously, a birch tree is not vis invisible. If it goes through the third spar, would have to break it, but the spar was not break, broken in the proper location. So what they did, they uh, made a nice uh, line and, and cut it according to this line, the red line, as you can see, to two pieces, so they can claim uh, that the tree broke this spar during the uh, uh, approaching the ground. Well, we did a lot of effort to. Uh, answer any question. We have uh, built together with National Institute of Aviation Research 33 million elements finite element model with re inverse engineering using the uh, twin identical airplane that was used for by the govern government of Poland. We also tested every piece of the material in this uh, 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 airplane so we have very accurate ability to test any scenario. We could put the uh, uh, down into the ground, we could fly into the uh, uh, birch tree or another tree, uh, we could put explosion elements, uh, we can see what happens to passengers, we can uh, uh, get any answer. By comparing the simulation using, according to Russian uh, theory, uh, which is uh, falling to the ground with 76 meters per second horizontal velocity and 18 meters per second vertical velocity as the full whole airplane without on the left uh, six meter left wing we found that individually every piece of this uh, uh, debris it looks different for example this is the tail section on the left you can see finite element on the right the uh, real state on the left, there is no bulkhead with the tail section. On the right, you see a bulkhead. On the left, the, all engines were separated from the tail section. Even that central part one was tilted. In the, on the right side, only right engine was separated due to explosion. And the other two were together with the tail section. This is the uh, famous door which uh, was uh, embedded into the ground uh, at the beginning of the uh, crash, scene, crash scene. It, it looks like embedded, like a, you know, without much of the deformation, in, in, as you can see. Now, if we do the same uh, uh, observation for the simulation, the door cannot be embedded. The, 
if a horizontal velocity basically drags this door forward and uh, twists and bends, there's no way to cleanly in inject this uh, door inside of the soil. We did a special um, work together with uh, Mia, and we found that the, in order to get this door into the ground, the vertical velocity has to be 120 meters per second, which is about 10 times more than falling airplane vertical velocity. And horizontal velocity has to be it's less than 30 meters per second, which is half, less than half of the horizontal velocity of the airplane. Well, now we know that the, the position, if, if in this position you have explosion, the vector which is going to the ground and backwards will reduce the horizontal velocity and increase vertical velocity to the requirements of physics. Overall, we can calculate that there is not enough energy in the system of the airplane uh, by its own to generate 60,000 fragments, as you can see from on the satellite picture, that are all over uh, this area. The, uh, basically, you need to have extra source of energy, and obviously this extra source of energy is explosions. The uh, www.smallxcrashnews.com uh, contains all in English materials that we collected, including the report in English and report in Polish, uh, if, and some other presentations that you may want to explore further. Some scientific aspects uh, that was done uh, by my, me and my colleagues uh, were published in peer-reviewed journals, international journals, and I can tell you three of my graduate students got PhD within these 12 years to work on that topic of small X. All three are Chinese, and all three got very good salary and were invited back to China and they are now uh, prominent professors in China. I asked my colleagues in China why the uh, uh, Chinese government has so much interest in this topic to hire three people from one school back to China. And, and they said, well, we have a neighbor that we need to understand. And this, is, will, this will help us to do that. Thank you.